listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Saturday Night Live After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's SNL After Show. That's right. Hey. It's Saturday Night Live, season 39, episode 19, hosted by Seth Rogen, musical performance, Ed Sheeran. And I gotta say, this was a man Why episode. is your voice so high? Because I thought like this one, it's really awkward. I can't get that high. Okay. <laughs> but this was a pretty good episode. You didn't like it? We'll get into it. We'll oh. get into it, okay? That's a high pitch for the awkward. We'll get into it. Yeah. A tease. Yeah, I'm your host, Roy Tahiri, and of course, joining with me is Danny Hoyt. Hi, I'm Danny Hoyt, and I love Saturday Night Live. That's great. And so does Keaton, but Keaton is not here. She's actually in New York doing some really awesome makeup stuff, so be sure to check out her Twitter page. You know what? If she wasn't doing something so cool that I would I would say that I love SNL more than her, but she has a legit excuse. Yeah, and it's pretty awesome. You guys have to check out the pictures. They're really cool. But before we break down this episode with Seth Rogen, I just want to talk quickly and briefly about last week's episode with uh, Anna Kendrick. So you know that Disney sketch with Little, Little Mermaid? Yes. Apparently Disney's legal team did not like it. Oh, why? Uh, according to hitfix.com, they had them uh, take it down everywhere on the web. So you cannot really? find this sketch online unless someone videotaped it. Even then, I don't even think it's going to be able to stay up. But why? Yeah. Did it say why? I didn't hear I that. I think it might be the way that a little mermaid was portrayed <laughs> you know and it's just kind of she i don't know what yeah so fun Weak. fact thanks to joseph boza for pointing that out for me um, thank you joseph i did not see that yeah so with that in mind let's get on to uh i don't know what that has to do with anything on mine but cold no. open coachella music festival a hot <laughs> hot topic Okay. This weekend. I said this last week. I said I want to do something more, like, I want them to be some more topical, more yep. current, relative, like, what's happening. And they did. And I think they listened to you this week, honestly. There's Maybe. A, I have there's, a few pointers There's a couple here. things. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> uh, I loved it. I actually, I mean, uh, the jokes could have been, I thought they could have gone even, like, a little crazier with them, but it was pretty funny. I laughed several times, and I thought that um, it, it was, they were very good impressions. I liked Beck Bennett's impression. Yeah, and I really liked that they brought in a semen. I, I know she yeah. plays the same kind of character, and it's very similar, like, what up, I'm a weirdo kind of guy, I'm a guy, but I look like a girl, that, that kind of <laughs> character. But uh, I like when she's, I'm rolling on Molly, they gave me something in the backstage it's called Molly, and I'm rolling. <laughs> you know what I loved about this was the fact that Brooks and Nassim got to be, there was yes. so many people in the, you know, when they said live from New York at Saturday night, Brooks got to be a part of that, and so did Nassim, that was cool. I got a question for you. For what? when they said live from New York, did you feel the energy this time? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, that's it was what through I thought the too. roof. Mm -hmm. The guy was so excited. I, well, you could tell it was their first time saying it. Right. Yeah. So like, I'm Brooks sure they had goose. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it, you had goosebumps. It was like a goosebumps moment. For that sure. made that opening for me. I really enjoyed that fact because it brought back the old school SNL. I I don't know. I feel like the open, the cold opens, they haven't given that much energy, at least in this season. Hmm. Um, with the excitement of saying live from New York, it's, I, I'm going to get hated on for saying that, but it's what I mean. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, but point out Taryn's guns that he brought. Hey, he did have some, I was kind of yeah. surprised. Remember last week I said, mm, look at those It arms. could be an optical illusion with uh, a little no. bit of like a tight shirt. Maybe, but I mean, last week in his French dance, he's, he had really nice arms. Not to sound creepy, but that's not creepy. I can say that. <laughs> Taryn, you have very nice arms. Taryn Killam has nice arms. We now know that you think that. And you like Canadians, too, so I might be in the running, if anything bad. Anyways. Um, Who likes Canadians? His wife is Canadian. Oh. Yeah. I did not know that. Oh. Well, eh? fun fact, eh? Fun fact. Kobe Smulders. Yeah, thank you. There Marissa in the booth. Thank you so much. Uh, so, with that, what did you grade it? Uh, I actually put it as a B plus. Interesting. It was almost an A for me, um, but it was gay. It was good. It's not a bad grade. Yeah, it was great. I first gave it a B minus, but then I gave it a B because I loved Brooks being able to say uh, live from New York and just his, the whole energy part. I really enjoyed that. So, yeah, that no, was and, great. And that fact that it was relatable and 
all that jazz. Uh, so the opening monologue, Seth Rogen. Okay, wait, can I say something about this? Yeah. If Brooks Whelan was was in the cold open and did that, that pretty much guarantees that he'll be around next year. Correct? In your opinion? Because no. here, well... Unless he messes up on something, because then they'd be gone just like that. No, unless you do like a fatal mess up, like you say something you never should say on TV. But like, people mess up, that's okay. Here, hey, here's what I'm saying. There's been a little bit of talk about which one of the six cast members... I think we know which one's going to go. Who? John. You really think so? Yeah, they only use him for the little kids. He does his little kid with Shallon. He's always, he's always good yeah, with Shallon's sketch. Yeah, but that's... Shallon. And dancing and dancing. I don't uh, know. Well, I just... All I, my only point is, I think that pretty much for me guarantees that Brooks is going to be back next season. He's been on a weekend update uh, just last week, and then he does this with the cold open. I hope so. We'll, we'll see. All right. We'll, we'll hope... I'm I'm rooting for him. I want him right. to. Well, I just I just <laughs> my opinion. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know. Let, let us know. Let Rory and I know who you think is gonna be who's gonna leave or yes. is anybody gonna leave. I hope no one leaves. But if someone had to, who's gonna be? Yes, exactly. We don't want them to leave, but if there's somebody that has to leave, yes. All right. So this is Seth Rogen's third time hosting, and the first time he hosted, he said he was 23 years old. That's insane. That is insane. But he writes down a journal to cover all the important things that happened to him on this hosting adventure. Family members come to visit him on set with uh, the same Seth Rogen laugh that he has. Can you do an imitation of his laugh? No, I okay. cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. That was kind of close. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like I'm choking. <laughs> but it was kind of close. Marissa, that's a terrible Seth Rogen laugh. Yay or nay? Yes, it is. No, not a yes. Terrible, Yay or nay. These terrible, are Canadian terms. Terrible laugh. I, I, I give you <laughs> nay. Good try. Good try. Yeah, nay. A for I'm effort. terrible. A for I effort, tried. okay? All right. So he can't think of any ideas for the writing sketch at 419, and then at 420, he comes up with a bunch of ideas at 420. No, that was cute. <laughs> and then he pranks James Franco with an underage girl on Instagram. Now, do you know about that whole James Franco Okay, incident? so I heard about it. I don't know specifics. I just heard that there was some shady business with James and an underage girl. Like, he was, like, commenting on her stuff, or what was it? Uh, James Franco, actually, he had a conversation with a 17-year-old girl uh, on Instagram, and he kept harassing her for, you know, her phone number. Uh, he would send her screenshots. They had, <laughs> yeah. And he asked her if she was single, where she was staying, and if he should rent his own room there. Oh, my gosh. And then the actor, I'm reading this off of, um, I think it was Hollywood Life website. Um, and basically, he sent pictures to her in... Um, when the conversation went public. But the thing is, James is taking the blame for it. He's 17 is technically the legal age in New York, and that's where the girl said yeah, she was. Yeah, this was his little publicity push yes. to try and get him back in the good graces. I, exactly. I, Even though I, the girl's from Scotland. He wasn't in my bad graces. I'm just not a humongous James uh, Franco guy. I love guy. James Franco. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm Don't bad mouth him. him. I'm trying no, to get I'm him. No, bad mouth him. I'm just kidding. I'm indifferent. <laughs> like, you know, he's, he's good. I, I love his serious stuff more than I like his, like, comedic. Like, yeah. I loved 127 hours, but then he does stuff like this, and... End of the... This is although, the end? Did you see... Yeah, and this is the end I was not a big fan of. Did you see the comedy roast of James Franco? Yes, I did. That was fantastic. Yes. That, for me, was a big mark on the plus side for James Franco. So maybe I, maybe I do like him. Yeah. Okay, I like James Franco. So we had also cameos of... Uh, Thank you for helping me sort that out no right problem. here. No problem. So glad I can help you with your life. <laughs> I'm glad that. we could all here at After Buzz <laughs> help you out, Danny. I appreciate that. <laughs> So we had some cameos from Zo Zoe Deschanel, and um, I love when she walks up, like, oh, all excited. And then she left. I thought that was going to be it. And then she quietly walked backward. Yeah. <laughs> it was cute. Um, and then James shows up again, James Franco, and then Zoe's out there with her, him again. Um, and, then and then one of the, my favorite people in the world comes out. Out of nowhere, Taylor Swift. T-Swift. Well, Ed Sheeran's there, and they're like best buds. True, but... And, yeah. She didn't need to come on for the monologue. She didn't need to, but I kind of liked it. Like, she yeah. needs to show. Okay, you want to know my prediction? Sure. I think Taylor Swift, she's never hosted, right? No, I think she has. Did she? She's been a musical guest for sure, and she's been on. I know she's been a musical yeah. guest, but did she host? I will find out for you right now. Look this but, up. Here, yeah. Well, because here's my prediction. Is that, uh, is that Taylor Swift will host next season or one of the last ones this season. And this was just to remind us that she's funny and she can be goofy and lovable because sometimes people think she's too, like, she's too cut and dry and made for media TV. Like, she's this perfect little girl. And she's, she's funny. She does have a personality. And I think that this was uh, a way to remind us of that and to get us excited about seeing, or me personally, just because I love Taylor Swift, seeing her more in the future. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's cool. I'm trying to look it up. My internet's no, look it not up. Uh, working very well. I'm also, pretty sure she did back in 2009 because her opening song she's singing about the other Taylor. Yes, yes, Taylor yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. She's grown a ton since 2009. Uh, let's, let's, let's talk about this because she's grown a lot since 2009. So I think she'd be a great second time host. I think she'd be 10 times funnier because if I forgot it, then it obviously wasn't very <laughs> memorable. Yeah. At least for me. Some people probably, yeah. Maybe but you want to show an emotion because she shows when you show emotion. Men show emotion. I know. And I love that line she said. It was great. <laughs> So, I really enjoyed this opening Thank you, monologue. Marissa. I thought Seth was very energetic. He was funny. He, was, he didn't do much, but that was great for an, a monologue. It was comedic, but it was actorish. I don't know if that is a word, if that's a way to describe it. But, you know, that's been my issue when Louis C.K. came on and Anna Kendrick. And I really loved yeah. Anna Kendrick's opening. Uh, but Seth Rogen, I really did like it. But where did his beard and glasses go? I don't know. And you know what? I... I kind of did like the irony of that. He was saying he didn't need the cameos and they came, but he really doesn't need those celebrity right. cameos. And it could have been. And that how he got approached by people about weed, like new yeah. writers, new everything. Yeah. It was, it was great. Okay. So I gave it an A. I gave it a B plus because it was semi-predictable with the weed jokes and things like that. Well, speaking of predictable, let's okay. move on to the next sketch. Game on. Shalon. 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 Uh, oh. The dare. So... <laughs> This is a great. This is a great staple sketch for SNL. It's not. Uh, it's not an A sketch every time. It depends on whoever they slide in. But every time it delivers laughs, it works every time, and it's really easy to put people into it. Uh, and Shallon, she kind of like Nassim kind of makes that sketch yep. for me. I mean, even if somebody falls short, uh, was it John Goodman that was in there? Uh, somebody, so, whoever it was one of the last people that oh. did it fell short for me. Was it John Goodman? It was a guy. Yeah, I want to say John Goodman or and if it just, the that's Halloween the, sketch. Uh, that's the last time I remember it falling short for me, but they pick it up. Like, you remember? Because you were talking about Keenan Moore's wedding ring and you thought that was sloppy. Mm -hmm. But I, the classroom for me picks it up, especially Nassim. This is by far like her best FaceTime that she gets on SNL, and she just kills it every time. So I love this sketch. It's always a B or a B plus for me. Yeah, I, I figure, I just wish they would do something. I guess they can't do something yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, they can't really. It's I guess it's more the delivery of the lines yeah. that really make it. And In what it is, like, crack! <laughs> just say now, now to crack. To crack. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the hero of our story. Uh, there's just a, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of good lines. I'm straight up addicted to Chips Ahoy. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and I love the irony of having Seth Rogen be the dare officer. Yeah, that that was great. It was like a sub subtle weed joke. Yeah. Exactly. There's a weed joke that wasn't a weed joke, which Officer I appreciate Kellogg? because I thought there was going to be too many weed jokes. Officer Kellogg. Kellogg what? For like co like cornflakes? Like the brand of cereal? Yeah, maybe Kellogg's. I'm like what? Like, like he gets food? high and eats. Munchy oh, food. Oh, I see. So he could have been like Officer Funyun and you would have thought that was funny too? Yeah. Well, I gotcha. Well, I didn't no, realize. I didn't Officer Fun. I feel like that would be trying too hard. Like Officer Lay's? Yeah, For like maybe. potato chips? Yeah, maybe. Okay. You know, something, something like that. I but didn't yeah, pick up so on that one. I see where you're going there. I like that. That's creative. Yeah, and I'm really glad Nassim was back in. Uh, let's see, what else did I write? Yeah, so I enjoyed it. And I gave it a B. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. That is very fair. Okay. Uh, what did you give it? A B. Okay. So oh, B+. Plus. The next B+. Plus. Oh, yeah. A. It's going up. Yes. P.S. Taylor Swift did host in 2009 and musical performance. So okay. Back in November 2009. Awesome. So, CNN take home pregnancy test. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was, finally, we have a promo ad for something that they used to do, what we're used to seeing on SNL. Let me say something about this. You know what, I'm, do you know what I'm about to say? Do you remember what Malaysia I said at the Airlines? beginning? So I said, I want you guys to do something about, I wanted SNL to do something about the flight that doesn't bash it because it's still a sensitive subject and people were lost. That's a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. like this is, it's, it's terrible. However, I think there's a way to talk about it without making fun of it, just making light of the fact that this is a little bit of the situation. Situational humor. And they did. Everything they said pointed to the search without saying it. And it was funny without making fun of it. Yeah. Agreed? Yeah, it wasn't That extreme. is exactly what I was trying to say last week. Like, I wanted them to do something like that. I Maybe think they, they were it. looking for somebody to kind of make fun of. Because this isn't making fun of the Malaysia airport no, airplane it's, missing. No, it's like the search and the fact that like CNN, CNN will come in and be like, we found something and... Mm -hmm. But we don't exactly yeah. know what. It, yeah, honey, I guess I was pregnant. The pregnancy search because <laughs> it continues into the third week. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, I thought that was clearly evident if you follow news that you knew that they were talking about. 
Exactly. And yeah. I, out of this whole sketch, what I really liked it too is because Beck Bennett and Vanessa Barrier just had great chemistry together. They when do. They're supposed to be I saw couples. people write about that. They have great chemistry together. Yeah. And I love Vanessa's, eh, okay. Eh. <laughs> like, her little, ah, it's just, it's great. She does it for a lot of things, but I really like when she does that. It's, it's humorous. Agreed. I gave it an A minus. Did you? I did because I was finally excited for a promo. That was a legit, straightforward kind of promo. It was and a it wasn't too me. extreme. Still on a B for me. Still a B, huh? Yeah, it's still a B. That's not a bad B. Bs are great. I don't give out A's very, very often. Whatever. <laughs> Lucy. <laughs> Lucy. Uh, so, the next sketch is Helen in the restaurant. I didn't really, I just named it Helen. I named it Dinner Party. Th dinner Party. That um, works. I think, here's my thing with this sketch. I think in theory, it's funny. Had physical humor. Had physical humor. Had situational humor, and there's a lot of jokes you can make that are just plain out, you know, satirical, that you can make puns, or you can make sexual jokes. Like, there's a lot of things they could do. I don't feel like they did any of them well. So for those that are listening or wondering what we're talking about, we're talking about the dinner party sketch at the restaurant when Helen has broken arms, and her husband, Alan... Played Helen by Seth Alan, Rogen. Yes, played by Seth Rogen, has to help her with everything. And there's also Cecily Strong, Kyle Mooney, Kate McKinnon, and then we have John Milner and Brooks Whelan come in as the waiters. Yeah. Why do they have to have southern accents, though? Does that just make it more funny? I don't know. That's a great question. It, it maybe places it. It puts it in a certain part of the country for you. Like, so what they talk about can be... I guess they only really talked about food. Well, because you remember a discussion about Josh Hutcherson and when they did the pet vet thing, and yeah. he had a southern accent. And we're like, well, why did he have to have a southern accent? Maybe because yeah. it's sweeter to say? I don't know. Maybe just to change it up. Like, to, to put it in a different location, you know, for us visually mm -hmm. in our head. Like, to put this in Louisiana or Georgia or something like that. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, when Seth is giving her the wine to drink, I, was, I wanted more. I wanted him to actually kind of spill it more yeah. in a sense of a whose line is it anyways kind of spillage. Really? But not too extreme because that's obviously you wouldn't really overfill. Well, let me ask you this. When he was rubbing the steak in her face, did you get annoyed? Like, okay, stop. Like, she was obviously like, oh, my God, stop doing this. No, I really liked it. Really? I wanted to keep going. Okay. And same with the lipstick. When he was doing the lipstick, it that made her funny. look like Joker. Yeah, that was Batman. funny. And then he grabs her, he full on grabs her boobs. He did. And I didn't, I wondered about, tell me your opinion. Do you think they planned that? Like that was in rehearsal? I'm sure it was. Not, maybe not like grab, grab. But I don't know. I think Seth Rogen like, is the kind of guy that would be like, that just, like just dabs it in rehearsal and then full on does that on stage. Just but like, the thing is, it's supposed to be, the joke is supposed to take it over. The fact that he's spilling and he's I don't know. I think they could always go for it. Like, true. okay, well, hold on, let me say this while we're talking about. Like, because it's almost like, a you know, they play pranks live. Are you going to talk about the fart? No, oh. I was going to talk about in the beginning when he was looking through his book, he had a page, an extra page they turned. I don't know if you saw this. He looked and he kind of laughed and they turned an extra page. I wondered oh. if somebody like wrote in the something. the opening in, monologue? Yeah, did something in there. Because huh. you hear about them doing this stuff to each yeah. other all the time. Like, they put stuff in pockets and random things. I wondered if. So that was, that was another one. I That's feel interesting. Like, I didn't yeah. catch that. Yeah. Nice catch, Danny. Anyways, nice thank catch. you. Nice catch. I forgot to mention it. But now, in this sketch... Seth starts cracking up he when does. she says, cut the steak. And then everyone, even Kate, has like a look on her cut face it. as though he f really actually farted. He may have. He may so, have. And I because would. everyone had a look on their face as though they could smell something. And it wasn't just acting like they could smell. It was like, holy crap. He literally, oh, I know that face because. Do you? My brother, well, I don't want to get them mad at me, but they would, f okay, met guys around me would fart, and, like, some of them would fart really bad smelling, and, you know, there's just that really, that, oh, God, it burns kind of smell, and you walk out. Yeah. For example, the dogs, dogs fart really bad, too, and that still burns. Anyways, point is, they have a facial expression. I know, I got carried away talking about farts. Farts, farts. Um, what are we talking about right now? We're talking about the fart that Seth did, it, or if he did. I know, did. I'm just saying, <laughs> this is crazy talk. You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> But I gave it a B plus. Did you? I did. This was this was lower B's for me. This was a B minus. Now, do you think Helen could be a reoccurring character for eighty? No, because she's not gonna have her arms broken forever. True, but and uh, Gilly, uh, Keenan's character had broken arms. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't think it went over well enough okay. to blow my socks off. I just wanted to throw that out there. All right. But put it in the, you want to put it in the universe. But you know what I really want to put in the universe is what? how awesome Monster Pals was. Oh, Monster Pals was the best thing of the night. The best. Monster Pals was... A plus. A, it was so different and unique. And this is, for me, what was lacking in most of this episode. There wasn't a lot of, like... I know you're not a big fan of Kyle Mooney, 
But what he did, mm -hmm. this one wasn't as good as some of the other I ones, am. but like it's, cr well, now that you're not a fan, I mean the, like the, for you and Keaton, like his humor's not your, Keaton said this last week, it's not like her necessarily brand of humor. Mm -hmm. She still finds it funny, but it's not like her brand of humor. For me, like that's my brand of humor, but it's creative and it's like outside of the box. It's just different. I felt like this episode lacked a little bit of like creative this, writing. Oh, this episode, except not this for sketch. Monster Pals. Okay, so for those that are listening, two monster friends are in a bar when Seth Rogen, a bully, comes up to them and calls them ugly. This makes Monster One, which was named Dave, Danny, sorry, Monster Danny, upset and want to, oh no, it was Jim. Wow, I just butchered the whole description. I'm not even going to go further. You guys know what I'm talking about. Jim and Danny. But basically the monsters go and they get surgery. One of them, uh, Jimmy does, and Danny is looking for Jimmy, Jim, and he keeps going. And he finds him and it's freaking James Franco. And I love when he's going around town. Going up to people. Those are real shots. I know. Those are, and the you know, after reactions. they do it, they have to get the people to sign a release. Right. But like, those are real reactions. That made, I actually, for a second, when he was on the Today Show or Good Morning America, yeah. whatever that was, holding the sign, like you could see the people around him were laughing. They knew they were going to yeah. be on SNL. But like, you almost like felt for the guy. Like, yeah. It was like, wah, wah, like the music, mm -hmm. and it was dramatic. Um, this was so well done, and I want to know whose brain this came from because it was, I just loved it. I, I, it took me Mike O'Brien, I'm going to say. I don't know about that. Why was he the lead sketch? Because he's got a weird face. But you remember how people say that. They write the sketches, face. they get to be in it. Maybe, yeah. And he I mean, does I've... do digital, he does little shorts. He did that bug reporter one. That's he did... true. So he is capable of the, right. the owl Bible book thing. So, just saying. That's I think it might be him. Well. But this also, I read online that it, this sketch reminded people of the sad mouth, uh, yeah. sad mouse sketch yeah. on, uh, with Bruno Mars. It's like a new, like a better version, mm -hmm. newer, better, updated, I just, upgraded. I just really loved when the monsters would go around talking, and be like rrr, rrr, Jim, <laughs> <laughs> like you'd only hear the word Jim, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then at the end, when James and uh, Mike are talking about how their faces, and Mike's like, "Well, like I went for the cheaper went one, for the cheaper version, couldn't afford it." Yeah, <laughs> that's you go with that so nose? good. So A plus. Hey, I can. Right? I have. A, I have a large nose. I can relate to that. So that's why I think it's. All, I. I relate to that. <laughs> I bought a cheap face. So the next sketch is Blue River Dog Food with Seth Rogen and Cecily Strong. Wait, hold on. We didn't grade Monster Pals. Oh, yeah, we did. A plus. A plus for me, too. Yeah, we're just awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Blue River Dog Food. Did you like this? I actually did. Cecily, this was one of my favorite moments from Cecily I've ever seen. Her progression of getting more and more upset was so fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and then when she goes against the wall, I love this from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. This was great. Um, anytime they bring a puppy in, like... Remember oh. when they used to have Will Ferrell and they'd be like, mm -hmm. I, I can't remember exactly but what this the... puppy tops all of those puppies. Tops this puppy puppies. was super cute. What was the breed of the puppy? A pug mix of something? It was a pug and some. If anybody knows what the yeah. breed of that puppy was in this sketch, the Blue River Dog Food, tell us because that dog, tweet us please. I want to know. I want to like look up and see if did this dog you, is available for purchase. Did you notice that Peanut uh, had a Jewish tag, uh, like a Jewish star, no. the star of David really? in front of him? What but do you I, think that means? Well, A, Seth is Jewish, oh. so I think that was their tie-in, but also because they were covering up the dog tag that it had. The dog ha tag had a name on it, uh, Sisha, something like that, and then it had a phone number on it. Couldn't make out the middle digits, but I made out the the, fir the area code in the last four. Creeper. How'd you find that out? Called pause. What? I paused the TV. Oh, really? I just paused it. And you could yeah. see it? Yeah. On That's the screen, that was so on. funny. Yeah. So there's a phone number. I don't want to give it out just because. Wait, but you can so you can see seven of the digits, not ten. Correct. And because okay. the the star blocks the middle ones. The middle one. Okay, so it doesn't block like an area code. It just blocks, no. There's an it blocks area code. Nine ones. seven three was the area code. Oh. Yeah. oh my so if you want gosh. the puppy, let, let's work on something to get that puppy. That huh? is so funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, this sketch for me, I it was an A minus. Um, maybe an A. I, there was nothing wrong with it, I, other than it. There was nothing wrong with it. Right. I love this sketch. Yeah. And, I love that they didn't make it into a short and uh -uh. that they actually did it live. Yes. Yeah. I was telling you how I'm so tired of them doing promos that they could actually do That's right. in you studio. Were that, yeah. And they did this in studio and it was great from head to finish or from start to finish. And I think Cecily wasn't was behind writing this because she got a puppy recently. And if you follow on Instagram, she's got it all over the place. So I'm thinking she's been looking at dog food labels a lot more and paying attention to how it says corn fed. But really, it's not. So maybe that's why she was cover. so invested in this, why she exactly. acted so well, because it was her baby. It was mm -hmm. her little puppy. <laughs> Just say, well, get that it? wasn't her puppy, but yeah. No, I'm, it was like her baby, her puppy. Get it? Her get puppy. It. Be I, get never it. Mind. I get it. Never mind. That one missed. I'm sorry. So I yeah, gave it this was great. an A. 
two A's. Sweet. Game on. Yes. So now Ed Sheeran performs. Oh, Ed Sheeran's so good. He reminds me of Jason Mraz. You know, I've and never they, heard him live. What's funny is they said Jason Mraz later in in the sketch, uh, which was very funny in the last sketch. Um, oh yeah, they did. Ed Sheeran mm -hmm. is so good. Uh, I'm just that guy blows me away. I've been a big fan of Ed Sheeran. Uh, had the honor to meet him one time, and he couldn't have been nicer. The guys, and you can tell by the way you watch him, he's very humble in his, in his approach. He doesn't come across like a cocky guy. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like his music is that way too. It's very like vibe. He doesn't come across in your face. It's for who it's for, and yeah. you like it if you like it. I liked how this progressed from from the guitar and, and progressed into a song. It was, it's, he just released it, I believe, April 7th mm -hmm. as his single off his upcoming album. Um, you can tell it was kind of like, a, I feel like it was a little bit of a made for radio, like it's more upbeat than his other stuff, mm -hmm. but I still liked it. Yeah. So. He was, he was a very good performer. What about his second performance? We'll get there. You want you don't want to just get out of the mm -mm. way now? No. Okay. No way. Alrighty. Weekend update. Colin Jost and Cecily Strong. Cecily finally starts the sketch, the lead in. Mm -hmm. And we have visitor David Ortiz. Big Poppy. This yes. was my favorite, yes. maybe, nah, not my favorite, but this was one of the more solid weekend updates as far as their jokes mm -hmm. and their guests. Jacob's always a hit, Jacob the Bar Mitzvah boy. Were you uh, excited that he came back? Yeah, that's one. Of, that's so good. And it was good to see that they, you know, they yeah. incorporated Cecily instead of Colin because she's a little better interviewer with guests. Yeah. We've talked about this. Although, Colin did a good job with uh, David Ortiz, with Keenan. Yeah, he did better. He did better. It was but a little it, more off the cuff as opposed to like just reading what the question on the prompter is or card and just doing it. Yeah. It was a little more like he let his personality show with it, I thought. Yeah, and did you know that uh, David Ortiz actually tweeted out? Oh, about, did he? Yeah, so he tweeted on his uh, Twitter, <laughs> have to give shout out to Kenan Thompson for that skit on NBC SNL. I know my girl, that ri the real Dratch, would approve. Yeah. So he uh, tweeted about it. He enjoyed it. He was happy about the Keenan, impersonation. Keenan, that was, because if Keenan's done David Ortiz before, then I've missed it. Um, but that's, that was a great impression. That was one of my favorite Keenan impressions. It I'm not great. a David Ortiz guy, but he nailed it so well. Like the claps and everything mm -hmm. was so good. And because David Ortiz is a very positive, kind of happy, silly guy, it works when Keenan giggles. Yeah, uh, kind of. You know, like to have Keenan's smiling smirk, it's because he's being is care. It's an excuse, but you know how I feel about Keenan and how he yeah, does his good. impressions. Uh, so Jacob, you like Sam? What? You show me his son. Oh. <laughs> you like Sam? You show me his son. It was good. It was very good. Bats for bats. Do you suffer from depression? <laughs> Don't. Don't. <laughs> that was so good. good. Yes. Yeah. This. Way, but you. I just wanted to point that out because you said that Colin. And I agree with you that needed to be better at interviewing and interacting with guests. Mm -hmm. I thought he improved here, my personal He opinion. improved, but I don't think it was that much. I guess, okay, Rome wasn't built in a day. I get it. It's I a get step. It. I get it. It's, you're right. It's a step forward. Baby puppy steps. <laughs> exactly. Jacob, uh, the bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah boy, I really enjoyed the fact. Um, at first, I was like, oh, God, she's just going to do the same thing Seth did. Come on, like, Cecily, do something on your own. Yeah. And that was when they did the little kind of flirty-ish kind of girl crush like boy liking the girl but i don't know i'm too young to like girls kind of reaction to her and i i was happy with that i took it as just that that jacob that character is just a shy character because he was like that with seth too like he was just he'd be like <gasps> like it was just it, yeah but it was more kinda, like a wall with seth yeah maybe i don't know Until but i really i really liked how they like introduced cecily like they they showed us the introduction of cecily being like I, you know, I, I know Seth's gone, but I'll, you know. Yeah. I, so I, I just enjoyed the way they portrayed that because that says it's going to be a recurring character. It's going to happen mm -hmm. again. And when she asks him about Derek Jeter and and Jacob wipes his eye like he yeah. almost starts crying yeah. and freaks out, was the best moment of that entire thing. Mm -hmm. It was so awkward. And, like, that's what he peeks on, Jacob, is, like, being awkward and yeah. weird. And it was that was the best moment for me. It was great, yeah. I definitely enjoyed that. <laughs> Do you think uh, Jacob, the mar bar mitzvah boy, will ever go through puberty? No, I do not. I think it will always be. That's a great. That's a great question, right? I think he will always be right there. Really? That age. I think the chair will always be lower. I think he'll always be like this, <laughs> and I think he'll always turn the pages. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> he'll always turn the pages and make the casserole. <laughs> that was my. That was my one impression, and I'm done for the season. Oh man, that was that was. I don't even know what to say to that. That was just. <laughs> Um, but Guys, if, if you couldn't see that, I just lowered my chair like Jacob yes. Lord, and I pretended to do a voice in the eyes. It wasn't very good. 
But if you want to see it, you can uh, see it on YouTube. So we've had you do Bar Mitzvah Boy and Seth Rogen's Laugh so far this year. <laughs> Jeez, great. you're pulling them out of this me today. great, yeah. Uh, so I give, I give We Can Update a B. Yeah, I did, it's exactly what I gave it. It was, it was solid all around. Yeah. All right. Engagement party. Now, this is my... I'm going to have to say something. I'm going to throw this out there. Okay. This part of the night started to go downhill. It did. The, the whole second half of the episode wasn't yeah. as good as the first half. So the engagement party, I... I so he, Brian's gay. Seth, char- Seth, my, or Seth Rogen's character is or gay. Or was or flirted with the idea of it. And I, I like the idea of them trying to create a new character, Cousin Stacy, with Cecily. She, okay, so... And I could, I'll just say this now because I was going to say it later. She's, she was my MVP for this whole episode. Cecily mm-hmm. was. Uh, from Weekend Update to the Blue River Dog Food to this sketch. That, I agree with you 100%. I think that'll be a recurring character. Yeah. That was the best part of the sketch. She was so... Okay, I'm from Nebraska. I'm from the Midwest. And there's a lot of people that are kind of like that, um, that are similar to that character. I've seen that in real life. And so for me, it, it struck a chord of, of memories that I've mm-hmm. seen. Um, and... So I, I think, and I think she nailed that impression. So I, yes, I think that will be a recurring character. Yeah, I think they have something. They just need to work it out. Yeah. Find out what the what the punchlines are going to be. Yeah. Can you be in different such, like scenarios? You know, she could be the new, uh, you know, Kristen Wiig's character that had the telling of the lies and, or you know, would always try and top up somebody. Yeah. That character it could be something very similar upper. to that yeah the one upper yeah so it could be similar to that you never know yeah i gave this one a c and you um, got nasim as a sidekick yeah and as soon as i kick so it's another role for nasim it just the only thing that the best part about it was cecily i thought the narrative the idea was good yeah it wasn't um it was a, maybe a little uncomfortable for some people but that's why they put it in the second half of the show and i read that it felt unrehearsed and it did kind of look sloppy mm. like it looked yeah. sloppy i i do have a question about it what <laughs> so it's an engagement party right yeah where was Vanessa Bayer's engagement ring? Oh, was she not wearing it? No. That's funny. And I don't mean to be nitpicking, but it is an engagement party. You have an engagement ring if you are... See, that just adds to the factor of that maybe it was kind of sloppy. Like, it wasn't unrehearsed. Maybe somebody didn't think through that detail. Yeah. Well, you know, before... Well, what would you give this one? C. A C. I gave it to a C as well. Yeah. Uh, before we move on, uh, I do want to talk about iTunes and YouTubes because that's not going to be sloppy whatsoever. No way. No. So, guys, thank you so much for talking with us on YouTube and commenting. We love it. Uh, BDWJ1986. He, you know how you're saying that um, we were talking about last week about memorizing lines? Yeah. Well, this person explains they don't allow people to memorize their lines. Many guests have lobbied for this, but they don't allow it because they rehearse and cut so many sketches. So maybe that's what happened with this sketch. Maybe they threw it in last minute, and that's why it seems so sloppy. And they're like disheveled. Oh, exactly. Uh, shout out to CDA345, Chessy K, Rob's Reviews. Um, he made a comment about how we like the Beauty and the, you know, Beauty and the Beast last week with Anna Kendrick, how the opening reminded us of something or reminded me of something. He said it reminded me of uh, t- Todrick Hall's Beauty and the Beats. Todrick Hall, wow. Which, have you seen that on YouTube? No, but... It's I, actually pretty funny. What a reference. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, so check it out on YouTube as well, guys. And iTunes shout-out to Spunky Pants. Spunky who, Pants! Who loves this podcast and wants to see more of the uh, former porn star sketches. <laughs> yeah. And, Thank you, Spunky Pants. Oh, and then last one is Ghost8386, who's got a little crush on Keaton, I want to say. Hey, who doesn't? Keaton is amazing. Uh, Spunky Pants, I just want you to know... That is one of the coolest user handles I've ever heard in my entire life. Spunky Pants. Spunky Pants. That's amazing. I have no <laughs> words. I graded an A+. Plus. <laughs> That's so good. Well, they give us five stars, which everyone else can do on YouTube, on iTunes, or whoever, wherever you're listening from. Go on iTunes and rate us. Give us five stars. Comment below. Let us know what you want to hear more of. If you agree with our comments, if you don't, whatever. It's cool. We agree with you if you don't agree. Yeah. I'm always going to agree with Spunky Pants. Spunky Pants. All righty. Cool. So let's get back into this episode. Um, And let's talk about... Sorry, I moved my notes. Undercover Sharpton. I was bored with this. (sighs) So bored. I mean, the idea is great, and I think Mm -hmm. Keenan can be funny, but I was just bored with it. Yeah. I I didn't even write... And and only thing I wrote is, is that the same steak from the sketch at the beginning with the broken arms? I don't know. It very well could be. (laughs) The best part about the sketch was Kate McKinnon's New York accent behind Mm -hmm. the bar. I would go buy drinks from a girl if I knew a girl like that. That cracks me up. I love East Coast girls with attitude that are like like that. And she played that really well. That was my favorite part. I mean, Keenan looks good as Al Sharpton. I think he could do a better... I think he could kill that impression. Not that he didn't if it was 
written better. Yeah. I just was bored. Yeah. No, I agree completely. I was super bored. I thought there was potential, but then it just didn't. And then when they found out that they gave him the wrong suitcase, yeah, I didn't get that. It was just ended very abruptly. Yeah. It didn't have a tie. Yeah, I wrote that too. It ended really strangely. So I didn't even give it a grade. I guess that's a D. Really? Yeah, it was, I, guess, I gave it a C plus just because I really liked Kate McKinnon, who I missed a little bit in this episode. Okay, C minus, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Ed Sheeran performs number two. His song, Don't. Okay, this... Don't. And I told you, I'm a big Ed Sheeran fan. This was very much more conducive to Ed Sheeran fans that like him for his singer-songwriter, kind of poppy, vibey hits that are instrumental sounding. There's a lot of adjectives there. But... Um, two sketches before in the wedding rehearsal dinner when they referenced Jason Mraz. Yes. Uh, I laughed pretty hard because that's, he kind of does, he kind of had a Jason Mraz feel. I loved Jason Mraz. I liked Jason Mraz. I love Ed Sheeran. And I think he takes what Jason Mraz kind of did and does it better. Because see, I've seen Jason Mraz live. And Have you? he's amazing. Really? Super Good. amazing. Good, I've never seen him live. And I, I got the same vibe from Ed. Ed yeah. I'm calling him Ed now. <laughs> We're on a first name basis. <laughs> uh, but I got the same vibe from him. I just, I feel you have to see him live. Yeah. I feel like that you would, even though he probably just stands there and plays, I feel he Puts would have so show. much energy. Yeah, that doesn't surprise Ed. me. I have, I have one of his live albums. Wait, you're talking about Ed or Sharon? Or Ed or Jason. <laughs> Jason. I mean, the crowd's oh, going I was nuts, talking about yeah. Jason was, a, yeah, he just stood there, but he did move around. He interacted with the crowd. But yeah. Ed, I feel like, would be the same way with the same level of intensity when he's on his own stage. I would pay just as much money to see Ed Sheeran play in Staples Center by himself as I would to sit in a living room with 20 people and have him and just his guitar. Yeah? That's yeah, I'm serious. I think he I would almost prefer to sit in a living room and just like let him play and just enjoy it that way. I think he's brilliant with just a guitar. I agree. I love acoustic kind of yeah. style, so. Obviously straight. I'm an Ed Sheeran fan. That's great, and I'm a Jason Mraz fan. Well, hi, there we go. So maybe we can be in the middle there. I'm curious to think, or to hear what you think about this next sketch. I don't know if I'm allowed to say. I want you to go first. A Very Smoky 420 with Kyle Mooney, Digital Short. Go. <sighs> okay, so, <laughs> yay, a drug sketch with Seth Rogen. But then I'm like, wait, is Seth Rogen going to even appear? A Very Smoky 420. Hmm. They don't really ever say smoke. They say snug. Snoke. And they don't say it until the very end when he says, nah, I don't smoke. Did yeah. you notice that? They don't ever say the word yeah, smoke? That's the, that's, yeah, he yeah, says yeah. smoke, but that's the, pri that's the primitive of the whole sketch. I know, but I'm just saying, how oh. did he get this approved by Lauren? This is a, if, if Little Mermaid gets taken off. No, that, that's not an SNL thing. That was a Disney thing. I know, but still, I don't know. Wait, so what's your thing with it? I don't get it. I don't get it either. Just You asked me on the spot. Listen, so... <laughs> So, and it, I've said this several times. So, Kyle, before the show, some of the stuff he did, this was similar to a character he has where he does like kind of the mumbly, like, hey, bro, go and get shot, go and get shot, let's go get snoked. Like, he does this weird character where he kind of mumbles. Um, it's not everybody's humor, but it's awkwardly awesome. And that's why I like it's creative and it's different. And the whole thing hinges on at the very end when he says, no, bro, I don't smoke. Mm -hmm. And he kind of alluded to it when Beck came out. You know, this, this uh, Bob, Bob Bob Blinger, bro, is like a Santa Claus of weed. Um, I, I, enjoy, I just really enjoy this. I enjoy his, the way his brain works, him and Beck Bennett. And this is what I'm saying. Give them four minutes every show to do something weird. I, I'm down to see weird every time. Yeah. I'm not against it whatsoever. I just, this wasn't one of my favorites. Yeah. It was good, but it wasn't one of my favorites. It wasn't one of my favorites of the digital shorts, but I just still enjoyed it. I gave it an A minus. Yeah. Uh, there was something about, I, I found it ironic that they had Dare in the very beginning of the se the episode. The, and then they end with this. And then, yeah. Oh. Reenie, beanie, meanie, Jimmy Nugget, Rolly J's, dude. Yep. Reenie, so, beanie, Jimmy Nugget, Rolly J's, dude. So I would give it maybe like a uh, B minus. Reenie, beanie, meanie, Jimmy Nugget, Rolly J's, dude. <laughs> I was having so hard when he said that. And they were gonna keep singing that. So Reenie, Beanie, Meanie, Ro Jimmy Nugget, <laughs> Rolly J's, dude. I literally paused and rewound a bunch of times so I could write that down and get it word for word. Do you want to hear it one more time? One more time. Weenie, Beanie, Meanie, Jimmy Nugget, Rolly J's, dude. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Danny Hoyt, everybody. Danny Hoyt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Thanks, Marissa. <laughs> so the last sketch of the night is Herman and Son. It's Sons. Sorry, I forgot the S. <laughs> yeah. Did you catch why that was why that was clever? Because they aren't brothers or anything. It's just Herman and, and Sons. And then the other guy's yeah. last name was Sons. Yeah, Keena's last name. The oldest sperm bank. All the sperms got to go. This Look, warehouse is exploding with it. What did they have? Like just ten sketches, and they just put like drew one out of a hat to throw one at the end. This was not 
funny and the the like the joke is getting yogurt the cross you know mixed up of yogurt and yeah. semen was n just not that funny to me come on you don't go get frozen yogurt oh it's gross it's no relatable. but it's gross uh the idea of it is gross which it just wasn't funny it was more gross than funny to me Okay, so here's my question for you. This it was more like, a question. oh, God, that's disgusting to me than like, oh, my gosh, that's hilarious. But you giggled. Yeah, I mean, I giggled, and that's why I gave it a B minus. Yeah, I gave I it a B minus, too. Think it, I, to close out the show? Okay, but here's, I got a question for you. So yeah. the engagement party and this sketch, this sketch was more put together and planned than the engagement party was. Yeah, because I had digital pieces they had to throw in. Exactly. That was, that's why I gave it a better grade, was because it, there was a lot of effort put into this sketch. Too much effort for a sketch that's not that that's funny, true. in my opinion. Uh, like, you know, they had the animation and they had the yogurt machine that they had yeah. to bring out, a prop. So, for those kind of sketches, I don't, I don't know. I, I grade don't, based off how much I laugh and enjoy it versus, yeah. like, how much, you know what I mean? See, when I, I don't really enjoy that much funny-wise, I go down and be like, okay, how much time? Because like, there are people out there, you know, yeah. who are working hard. The write, well, writers, obviously. Look, I'm never get, dissing them. I know they put a ton of work in. I'm just my opinion and what the fans think and that's I don't know I agree with you there was a ton of hard work put in yeah not diminishing that I think you guys work hard and for the record we love you and appreciate all of you for even creating the show for us to laugh at and smile before we go to bed exactly or when we wake up mm -hmm. whenever you watch or it. even during sleeping yes <laughs> <laughs> yes and I don't speak English by the way <laughs> I speak my own language uh so I gave it a B minus as well yeah and if people are still listening to this, they probably already figured that out. But, uh, <laughs> so overall, sketch with Seth Rogen. Overall, for me, it was a B minus. I thought Seth Rogen's episode would be funnier. It was better than some recent episodes, like Jim Parsons. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was good. It's not as good as I wanted it to be, selfishly, personally. I agree. Um, I, I, I mean, I felt like they did use. The, I don't know what kind of jokes they could have used with Seth. Yeah. But I do feel like his spin was on everything. I do feel like he was a maybe a part of the actually a part of the writing crew. Really? Well, see, so here's here's my big knock on the thing. They he joked at the beginning that they him and the writers didn't have any jokes outside of weed, mm -hmm. and that turned out to be true. Yeah. Like they so maybe really he was really of, saying it. Yeah, a lot of funny jokes outside of weed, yeah. which sucks for us. Like I want to see. But think More. about new writers, new, you know, wanting to have the, the yeah. Seth Rogen. The... I just wanted more. Okay. No, well, that's fair. If and when he comes back in a couple of years. Uh, he'll come back. I want him to come back. I just want it to be, like, I want it to be awesome. And I, I hope by that Seth time, the narrative of what's funny about Seth Rogen isn't just weed. Like, he's had a role or two that are knockouts and we can, you know what I mean? Yeah. L l jokes. So Seth Rogen versus Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. I, I only bring it up. Really? You think Jonah Hill's is better than Seth Rogen's episode? Oh, that's a tough call. I'm going to say no on that one. A hard no. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because I, think I so. I feel like I'm actually going to remember things with this this episode. You're going to remember Seth? things that don't have to do with Seth, though. Monster Pals. No, I'm going to remember about Dare. Yeah, that was and a, that, that how was he did the drugs. Like Shout all these, sketch. the drug sketches are rememberable because you remember. You think I of Seth, think, you go I think that's that overplayed. I want to see like more stuff about Seth. I want to see like Adam Sandler type humor stuff where there's inside jokes that aren't just about weed and and goofy movies he made that w did okay. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's all. I hear you. Well, yeah. then maybe down the line he'll come back again. And then like, we'll, did we you will see, talk about it and compare the two? Did you see at the MTV Movie Movie Awards last night when he kissed his mom? No. Um, do you remember that movie he did with Barbara Streisand where they like road trip oh, across yeah. the country? Things like that where like he could do like that was funny. He had they had gold tickets under people's seat and he had to kiss his mom. Long story short, on the MTV movie. I don't even know if it was his real mom. But like things like that where he did a movie with Barbara Streisand and they that would have been funny, like he has to has to kiss his mom, some scenario like I those kind of things where it's not weed, but it's relative and topical to things he's done. Okay. Well, we'll see in the future. Speaking of future. Super future prediction. He's going to kiss yes. his mom sometime. <laughs> exactly. And now, <laughs> your After Buzz TV predictions. predictions. So we do not come back until the new episode is May 3rd with Andrew Garfield and musical guest Coldplay. Going to be so good. Have you heard Coldplay's new singles? No. Ah, oh, they're good. It's going to be awesome. I'm hoping, I have high expectations for this. Do you? So much high expectations. Because of Andrew Garfield? Yeah. Okay. And Coldplay. Go. Let me hear it. All right. So I definitely want a Spider-Man spoof. Yeah. They have to. Oh, it's going to be something. His first time hosting, they have to. And Emma has to show up. 
Emma Stone. Yeah. Because they're dating. They ha- and Jamie Foxx or she, one of them. I don't think Emma Stone will. I do. No, I don't, I she'll be there, but I don't, think, I don't think she'll be in any sketches. I, well, Jamie Foxx or Emma are going to show think- either in the opening monologue. Yeah, they're not going to be in they have Have they used anybody except for the musical guests in the sketches that are like surprise guests? Yeah. This uh, season? Yeah. Um, or in this new year? I'm just mumbling over here. I feel like. Oh, yeah, yeah they did it with think- John Goodman. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I want to see a parody of he was nominated for a best kiss with uh, Scar Joe. I want to see some kind of parody of something like that. And also, I would like to see, I don't know what you could do with Social Network, but I'd like to see something other than Spider-Man with something he's done. Do you think Justin Timberlake might show up? No, because... Uh, he's busy touring, I know. He's busy touring overseas, and <laughs> I think that would steal the thunder from him. He doesn't need somebody like that big. I, JT was just on in December. But I will tell you a sketch I do think is going to come back, and I think that he will be the guy for it. You ready for this? Drunk Uncle. No. Damn. Savarsky Crystals. It'll be the last one to close out the night. We're like, Savarsky <gasps> Crystals. Yes, the porn because stars. They, because they kind of use uh, a, an attractive guy that has a good personality for the centerpiece sure. of that sketch. They use Jonah Hill. But it's still like, I think <laughs> I think that. Let's rephrase that. Well, but he's a, a big personality. I said like an attractive guy. Jonah Hill's not a bad looking guy, but I think that. He's not Andrew Garfield. It could be Savarsky Crystals. Okay. Do you think Coldplay will be a part of any sketches? 100%. Yeah? Yep. Cool. I do. I, do I think too. Coldplay will be, the whole band will come out. It won't just be Chris Martin. I think it'll be the whole band will come out. And they'll do something with uh, maybe like a European thing. Uh, I don't know. Something different. Yeah. So I know we mentioned Gon- John Goodman had his uh, cameos on yeah. the actual sketches. I wonder if, he, if Andrew has a cameo in his monologue, if those people will reappear in the in a sketch, or maybe just no cameo in his monologue. And oh, James disappear. Franco. Yeah. Duh. Like this episode with Seth Frank. Uh, yeah. Rogan. But he just... was in the. But he was in the opening monologue. Yes, I was. That, my question earlier was, have we seen anyone in the opening monologue actually oh. show up later in the episode? Which Seth Rogan, they just did with yeah. the the monsters thing, but that wasn't live. That was a digital short. Anyways, let us know what you guys think. Comment below on YouTube. Uh, comment on iTunes. Don't forget, download the new app for iPhone and Android. After Buzz in free. the App Store. Yes, but besides being free, Danny, where can they find you? For free, <laughs> you can find me at Danny Hoyt. D-A-N-N-Y-H-O-Y-T on Twitter, on Instagram, on Vine. It's not as cool as Spunky Pants, but it's uh, my name. Next time. Next time <laughs> you can get it. And guys, you can find me on Twitter. And Instagram at Hey Roya, that's H E Y R O Y A. And you can also find me on the Archer After Show, where later tonight we are going to have Lucky Yates call in, who is also Krieger on Archer. So oh, no. be sure to check that out tonight be or sweet. anytime. I'm on the new 24 that's coming out May 5th. Oh, so awesome. I know, can't wait. Jack oh. Bauer's back. Well, guys, until May 4th, we will see you then. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. <laughs> Buzz, you let us, funky pants. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.